right. Good afternoon. Welcome to our inaugural Kite Virtual Roundtable. Happy to have you here. And um, today's topic is going to be the future of co-working. And my name is Richard Chapman, the president and CEO of the Kern Economic Development Corporation and co-founder of Kite, along with JP Lake, who is will be moderating today's discussion with our four panelists. Kite, which stands for the Kern Initiative for Talent and Entrepreneurship, was founded in January 2019 and with the overriding goal to promote and develop Kern County's entrepreneurial ecosystem. And Kern EDC has partnered with Seedcord Foundation to make sure that uh, we are successful, gain traction, and really help tell the story of the amazingly vibrant ecosystem in Kern County. We've established four pillars, and today actually one of the pillars is, is the uh, topic of discussion, which is spaces. Uh, the others are funding, guidance, and talent. And we believe all these, uh, these four areas are critical as we grow our ecosystem. You may have seen uh, recent news in the last year or so about how our region, Kern County, what was considered a surge city or region. And that was in terms of net new job creation, as well as firms, new firms under one year old success rate. And in addition, uh, we were rated in the top five in the country, according to economy.com, for uh, job creation in young firms. And that's out of 380 metros. Excited today to have KGET live streaming the event. And uh, please, as we move forward, if you have questions, um, submit them uh, through the chat feature and we will attempt to address them at the tail end of our program, which is approximately one hour long. So I'd like to announce uh, the four uh, panelists and in no specific order, but uh, Megan Cardenas, who's uh, very new to Bitwise. She goes by the title Community Catalyst. I like that, maybe I can try using that. Or also co-working space manager of Bitwise. And then under that is hashtag. Yeah, and she'll talk, tell a little bit about hashtag, how that works. And um, checking her LinkedIn, it says, tech ecosystem activating human potential to lift up the community. So she will talk about, uh, again, Bitwise's role in, in creating this and uh, lifting up or launching um, the tech uh, community. And as well, she comes from Bakersfield and then to Fresno, Modesto, and back to Bakersfield. So again, we're happy to have her uh, keep her talents in the Valley. And um, again, we will find out when Bitwise will schedule to open. Uh, Nikki Cummings, I've known at least 10 to 12 years. Uh, what an entrepreneur. I mean, she is the definition of entrepreneur and she continues to be in many ventures. Um, many of us know her for being co-founder of World Wind and Solar, which in 2016 was uh, the small business of the year, according to the Small Business Development uh, uh, SBDC and SBA administration. And she's also now the president of Mountain Top Real Estate Holdings. And I like her quote on um, LinkedIn. It says, you can't buy grit, but you can develop it. So maybe I can get a bumper sticker with that. Uh, Justin Powers is uh, calling, actually Nikki's calling from, I believe, Florida. Justin's calling from Kern River Valley. And he's actually in his co-work facility. He is the founder of Kernville Co-work, the CEO of Fire Vision. And um, I mean, again, he is an entrepreneur in many, in many facets. Uh, he formerly was with Salesforce and recently won 59 days of code. I, I have to find out why it's called 59 versus 60 days of code. Um, but I've just really enjoyed the chance to uh, meet with him and he has partnered on Kite from the very beginning. So uh, excited to hear his story and his predictions on the future of co-working. And last, but certainly not least, Tabari Brannon, uh, Mesh Cowork, I remember having a coffee at Dagny's many years ago and going upstairs and really being, uh, you know, blown away by what Mesh Cowork was doing, uh, how, how they were, you know, one of the first cowork facilities in our region. And again, his vision, and he's been involved with the startup community at least a decade or two. And as his LinkedIn profile says, help independent remote workers thrive through vibrant co-working connection. And I know we're going to talk about uh, remote workers and opportunities that we have in Kern County. So um, without further ado, I um, like to introduce uh, JP Lake, who frankly needs no introduction. 
C-Corp Foundation, Rain for Rent, Kern Venture uh, Group. And uh, we're excited to have JP moderate and facilitate today's conversation. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today for this first in uh, hopefully many uh, panel discussions about entrepreneurship in Bakersfield and Kern County. Uh, I want to thank all of our panelists for joining us today. We're going to dive right in, and um, I know we're going to have a great conversation. And I'm going to start off um, looking at you, Tabari, um, as the father of co-working in, in Bakersfield. Uh, you've been here doing it before anybody else and doing it very well. Uh, what are your customers telling you right now about the need for co-working in light of everything that's going on in our world? Right. Um, what, our, what our customers are saying is that they're actually missing the ability to connect in a space outside of their homes because what's happening is there's a there's a blurring together of the uh, the home life and the business life with a complexity that um, most of our members lives contain it's it's hard to uh, stay focused it's hard to get work done in addition to that um, people are actually feeling um, isolated because they're not able to go out of their house to interact with with other people and so I think now more than ever there's a there's a growing need for places that create community places that create connection which which happen in co-working spaces and and Megan and Justin you guys also uh, are uh, with organizations that have been doing co-working for a while. Are you hearing similar things in, in Fresno, Megan, or up in Kernville, Justin? And, and just feel free to jump in. Yeah, I think what um, what we've been hearing is, um, is kind of what I, we've been saying since the beginning is that co-working isn't just about desk spaces. It's not just about um, having you know a, a place where you can get work done it's it's really about uh, building community and building connections between people is is really what co-working is about um, and the desk space is something that facilitates that um, our members uh, have uh, especially kind of you know during the the, the, the height of uh, you know the stress of covid um, people were really reaching out, trying to find ways of, of having meaningful connections without being able to be uh, around in person with, uh, with, with each other. Um, and just it, now that uh, things are slowly starting to reopen, um, we're, we're seeing a lot of people looking for flexibility in how they work and, and being able to, uh, you know, work in a, a place where, where they could feel like they're, um, you know, safe and protected, but also get, um, just be able to be with other people. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add. They both pretty much <laughs> summed up what we are seeing for our Fresno members as well. So clearly a lot of challenges. Um, and I'm curious as a general question, uh, if, if you guys think that this will uh, permanently change work habits uh, and maybe as a segue to that question while each of you are thinking about it, I'm gonna transition to Nikki now uh, calling in all the way from Florida for those of you who may have missed that and rip Richard's opening uh, comments. Um, Nikki, you of course are up in Tehachapi uh, when you are here in town with us where your home is and, and your beautiful family is. And um, you're working on an exciting project up there which you'll, you'll be able to tell us more about. Um, but I want, want you to think about the question of um, uh, the idea that Starbucks has been tremendously successful over the last 20 or 30 30 years, you could say, with the idea that they offer a third space. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, home being the first place, work traditionally being the second place where we go and communicate and convene, uh, and Starbucks positioned itself as that third space. I'm wondering if uh, now that the second place, being our traditional offices, is at risk, um, does co-working fill a void? Um, does it have the opportunity to become that second place or maybe replace Starbucks as the third space? How is all that factoring into what you're thinking about doing up in Tehachapi with Village Collaborative? Uh, well, thank you guys for having me. I feel like I'm definitely the new kid on the block with, um, you know, having a space that's not built out yet. And I first want to say, Richard, I'm glad to see that you've graduated from stalking people on Facebook and you've moved up to LinkedIn. So you've progressed. And um, 
I like to see your forward momentum, so I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, so we're banking on that, JP. I think that everywhere Buddy and I go, it's funny, we, whenever we go, we're actually in Waco, Texas right now, and we're on our way to Florida. We visited the two big co-working spaces here in Waco before. And then inevitably we'll walk tops meeting at Starbucks and we ask ourselves, you know, why are people going there uh, when they could be going to a more professional setting? And so I don't know that we have the answer. It's, it's free, right? For one thing. And so uh, I think that we will have to do a good job in our space for marketing and letting people know that we have an affordable option that provides a more professional and private space. But I would definitely say that in the past couple months, Initially with COVID, Buddy and I backed off Buddy's my partner, my husband. We've been partners for 17 years in, uh, in business. You can imagine being married to your partner. Partners in life, partners in business is exciting and it has all kinds of you know challenges. Uh, but we backed off. We pulled back on the reins and we said, let's you know finish our planning and our, our permitting, but let's not go all in on a couple million dollar project because we'd rather have a vacant building that hasn't been built out than renovating a historic building and having all of our money involved in it or invested in it and then have it sit empty. But the past probably eight weeks, I have seen a research, just a, a resurgence of interest and activity and it hasn't been um, in relation to me marketing it, but people have been reaching out to the city of Tatchby. They've been reaching out to me directly. And so I do think that having day offices and day desks and I know everyone's um, format is different. Our space is going to be primarily executive suites that can also be rented by the day, not so much cubicles. We've seen when we've uh, visited with the many uh, venues that we've visited, they say that they make the most money on their private offices and their biggest regret is that they didn't build out more private offices. So we're leaning in that direction. So I'm hoping that in relation to COVID, we'll provide an affordable, viable option that will still give people private meeting space and distance, but without the overhead and the commitment, you know, the long-term leasing commitment. That's what we're gunning, gunning for. I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Justin and Tabari, um, are you also contemplating any design changes or, or programming type of changes? And of course, same for Bitwise, um, are you having to think about space differently in, in light of health and safety concerns? And then also um, just what you're hearing in terms of what people really need now if they're um, transitioning to a more permanent remote working environment. Yeah, um, so here at Kernville Cowork, uh, you can see part of the co-working space uh, over my right shoulder. Um, and uh, we've uh, we've had to readjust our space um, and and provide a lot of uh, space between our desks. Uh, you know the CDC guidelines say that everybody you know if you that in order to be safe you need to stay at least six feet apart. But that really doesn't feel that that far when you're sitting down at a desk. And so we've actually gone above and beyond that, created a lot of space. Um, but I think one of the bigger things is um, just kind of. Uh, Taking um, you know the changes that we're making and the direction we're heading, um, and kind of looking at that through the filter of um, what our vision is for for co-working in general. Um, as I uh, alluded to before, co-working isn't just about the desk space; it's about the connections. So, um, as much as we can, as as much as we reconfigure the space to to make sure everybody's safe and and up our uh, sanitization protocols and all that, um, at the end of the day, we're about helping people connect to each other. Um, and helping them to be productive. So things like um, like online collaboration, um, online meetups, uh, even things like virtual happy hours um, have been kind of a core part of our strategy to try and uh, um, you know create uh, continue to build this community and continue to build this uh, momentum that we've had um, you know since since before COVID, uh, but really kind of doubling down on the community aspect of it. Yeah, I would say that uh, things are are definitely changing because of COVID. And, and like Justin, we've uh, spread out our desk so that it gives at least the six feet. Um, but there was only one area in our space that we really had to adjust because we have a private office. In addition to that, we have suites 
that have uh, permanent desks that were pretty much spaced out. But um, what we're looking at is how do we uh, continue to build community um, in a culture where we're told to, you know, social, uh, to be socially distant. And so one of the things we're looking at is, you know, of course, Zoom, uh, Zoom meetings and uh, collaborative online events. But also we're, we're uh, launching a product line where we have um, a work from home product line. So what does that look like? So we provide some of the services that you would traditionally get in office. And that would be, you know, your, your desk, your chairs, your monitors, and these are you know, ergonomic products. But then in addition to that, you will also get um, a limited amount of time in the co-work space. So rather, rather than being, um, you're spending most of your time in the co-work space working, you're spending most of your time at home, but we're still providing you some of the services that we have uh, in the co-work space. And so that's the, that's the direction that we're heading in as, um, as more people begin to work at home we're trying to transition into understanding uh, how can we still provide uh, an excellent service water in their homes. So for Bitwise, uh, we have a unique opportunity now to take a look at this pandemic and the wave of changes that are coming and inform the way we set up our building because right now, you know, it's still under construction. Um, so we will absolutely be considering distance um, and having, you know, like a cleaning station um, where maybe we wouldn't have necessarily had all these anti, you know, bacterial products and disinfecting products out available. But yeah, we, um, it's, and to Tabari's point, people may be looking for more um, individual office space as opposed to just a larger co-working space. So that may inform some of the way we design the floor as well. So it's, there's, yeah, it's a unique opportunity for us in this time. And, and since um, we just touched upon your work going on with Bitwise downtown, of course, uh, everybody's always dying to know when the, the latest forecast is for opening. Could you and, and maybe share what you can uh, with all of the listeners right now? Sure, certainly. So construction has remained um, ongoing through this time and we are projecting to open the building in late fall. Uh, Bitwise, however, is planning to keep operations remote through the end of 2020 out of an abundance of caution for uh, everyone. And so we won't have our co-working space available until in 20, uh, 2021. Okay, I know we're all anxiously awaiting that and, and wish you guys the best as well as uh, Nikki you. and Buddy up into Hatchapi. I'm going to come back to you, Nikki. And um, Richard mentioned at the beginning of our Zoom meeting that Bakersfield is getting a lot of national attention and Kern County a lot of national attention for um, being a low cost area to live, of course, also having um, some recognition for the entrepreneurial things that are happening here and also a great community for remote work. Tehachapi, it seems to me, is ideally situated on the 58 and a lot of traffic coming through there. Is that at all part of your thoughts with what you want to do in Tehachapi? And to all of our panelists, um, I'm curious in your thoughts on um, whether you think COVID-19 might ultimately increase demand for co-working. So we are de definitely uh, hoping for that, JP. Obviously, uh, I I'm still in denial. I want to go back to things the way that they were a few months ago and just go back to normal, but I just don't know that that's going to be a reality. So people have for years and years thought of Tehachapi as a bedroom community because we don't, and in the past, haven't had a lot of industry outside of the prison. Now we have a beautiful new hospital uh, that's driving uh, job creation and obviously World Wind and Solar is one piece to the renewable pie that's a huge employer. World Wind, the company that we just uh, retired from and sold, was the largest private employer in town. But beyond that, we serve the aerospace industry in Edwards and at Mojave Air and Space Court. We have a lot of people who commute off the hill to Bakersfield and Lancaster Palmdale and even LA. And so we are hoping that in, in regards to uh, the pandemic that 
as people, if they are starting to work in a more remote setting, that we can provide employers with an option that says, look, if you don't want your folks to work from home exclusively, you want them to still have an office setting that has high speed internet and access to, you know, good digital printers and all the, you know, lovely elements that an, a business office affords, then we have this option for you where folks can go in, they can work part-time from an office or they can work full-time from that, that space. And so we're actually leveraging our partner with the city of Tehachapi and we'll do the same thing with the county to meet with folks like Edwards Air Force Base and different businesses at Mojave Air and Spaceport to actually show them what we have to offer and uh, provide that to them as an option for their workforce who live in Tehachapi. Thanks, Nikki. Justin, I think you, you've got some thoughts on how COVID's impacting uh, your work and where you see the industry going, correct? Uh, yeah, and especially um, here in Kern County, um, you know, one of the reasons that uh, from, from day one when we created the uh, Kernville Cowork was we wanted to create a destination for people that wanted to uh, work where they play. Um, and one thing that we're seeing is this massive uh, culture shift, and we have an entire generation now of employees that realize that they don't necessarily have to go into the you know, company headquarters every day. And you're getting a generation of employers that are realizing they don't need to keep 100% of their staff at the company headquarters. And there's actually a lot of benefits uh, to uh, allowing workplace flexibility. Um, and we're in a time right now where people don't want to be in those ultra high density cities uh, surrounded by crowds of people. Um, people want to be, uh, have access to the outdoors. And, and so we're seeing people that would normally come up to say the Kern River Valley for a weekend out of the year, maybe a week out of the year. Um, but they're realizing this is uh, something that maybe it is possible for them to have that work-life balance and, and live and work in the same place that they play. So, um, we've been getting actually a tremendous amount of demand here at Kernville Cowork over the past few weeks of uh, people that are relocating up here just so that they can have that, uh, that work-life balance that they weren't able to have before the, uh, the pandemic. Um, in fact, uh, the majority of the people in the building right now are uh, people that um, have relocated up here and are, are, are kind of utilizing this as an opportunity. So that demographic shift of people moving from the cities, what they're looking for is they're just looking for better quality of life. And, and Kern County is certainly a great place uh, to, to have a high affordability. Um, and then here in the Kern River Valley, there's so many outdoor opportunities that um, we're honestly, the question isn't, if people are going to come, it's going to be, you know, how are we going to find, how are they going to find enough housing and some of those kind of downstream questions. But co-working is absolutely a central part of that. If they don't have a, if they don't feel like they can get work done effectively, um, they're going to have a hard time uh, choosing that place to live. So I think for all of us, it's a, uh, it's a really crucial time. Yeah, interesting insights. I'm going to come back to this idea of working with um, other corporations and companies um, to provide them new options for their employees. Uh, before I do that, I do want to encourage all, all of our listeners and participants to submit questions into your chat box. If you're not already a Zoom expert after three and a half months of COVID, just uh, click on the bottom kind of portion of your Zoom and uh, you sh when you hover over it, you'll see chat. Click on that and uh, you can type in your questions. We're going to be doing some Q&A here um, after our kite announcement um, and we'll do Q&A with all of our panelists here. So, Tabar, I want to pick up on where we left off uh, with Nikki and Justin's comments about the future of co-working and remote work. Um, two questions, uh, Tabari, and, I'll, and then maybe Megan, you can follow. Um, do we have to rely on people moving uh, into Kern County from other counties in order for co-working uh, to grow in our county? And secondly, uh, are there opportunities for all four of your companies to maybe really create an interesting offering for local Kern County employers um, to provide four different remote work opportunities so that we could actually encourage our own sort of inter-county um, uh, networking and flow of people and ideas? Right. So, no, we don't have to rely on people, you know, migrating to Kern County, but you know, of course it will happen. Um, I actually had a conversation with a gentleman yesterday who's 
relocating here from San Francisco. And what he told me was um, everything is pretty much locked down. Um, everyone's working from home and it doesn't make sense to pay a, a, a very high rental rate to use your home as an office. Why not move to a place like Bakersfield? So, but no, we don't have to rely on that. And here's the reason why, because um, a lot of companies are, have been thrust into uh, working from home. And there's going to be inherently some, some good things about working from home, and there's going to be some inherent problems. And so I think once we kind of get in the groove of this work from home thing, we're going to realize that we do need that, uh, that second space, <laughs> as we're calling it, uh, that's, that's uh, separate from our homes, which gives us this uh, distinct mindset that, hey, we're in, we're in work mode. Um, I don't have to worry about the dishes or the kids screaming or being a home a homeschool parent, I can just come in, everything's taken care of for me and I can get to work. And I think the u unique opportunity is, um, you know, I don't know what it looks like, but I, I feel like um, if, there, if there are businesses who have in, employers or they do business in um, any one of the locations where our spaces exist, I think there's an opportunity to, to give them access to all spaces with some particular plan or some particular service. Um, I don't know what it looks like, but I think there's definitely opportunities as we begin to brainstorm and see what can we provide that will uh, meet the needs of our community. Thanks, Tabari. Megan, same question to you. Yeah, you know, these guys, I mean, I don't know why I'm here. These guys are doing a great job of taking all the words out of my mouth and the thoughts out of my brain. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, I believe we will see some influx of people from LA, but there, again, there's a huge opportunity here for um, business owners to rethink their own business model. And I know for um, hashtag, we'll have group rates. Um, so if a business decides it wants to send some of their employees remote, then there's a slightly discounted rate for a group. And it just gives, there's lots of flexibility, but still some amazing amenities that they could have in their own office. And again, if they're, you know, realizing they maybe don't need to spend as much on their current office space, this would be a real way to sort of shift um, expenses and, and revenue. Thanks, Megan. And, and coming from Bitwise with the footprint that you guys do and, and the expansion that you're um, uh, driving all over the country now, are you guys seeing other interesting models or programs um, or, or, or different um, things around the country and other communities that you're borrowing at Bitwise uh, that you plan to maybe bring to Bakersfield? And, um, and then Nikki, maybe if you, I'll ask you the same question as since you mentioned you and Buddy are out looking at different models as well. And um, if you could take the question after Megan, please. Yeah, so uh, Fresno has had co-working the, the hashtag co-working space there for quite some time. And the model that, um, that we've got going there has been working pretty well. And most of what we've implemented in Fresno will transfer to Bakersfield. Of course, um, you know, there's individual tweaks, tweaks per city, but um, for sure we, you know, our research and other co-working spaces has informed how we're moving forward here in Bakersfield, but it'll be pretty similar uh, to what's going on in Fresno as a, you know, Central Valley town with the same, some of the same uh, challenges that need to be met. Thanks, Nikki, uh, or sorry, thanks, Megan. Nikki, have, have you seen anything really different, unusual that's caught your eye in any of your travels uh, to other co-working uh, locations? Uh, you know, nothing too, I mean, we were just by that response over and over and over again about wishing that they had more private offices. So we were happy to see that we were on the right track and we did shift some of our layout and design. Uh, I've worked in consulting for when you're starting a co-working space. And so uh, I think some companies, some businesses, whether nonprofit or for-profit, co-working spaces leverage events really well. And they utilize their spaces for photography shoots or private events, not just events that they're offering for their membership or 
community. So I think that I still have a lot more to learn um, on that front, but I know that there are some co-working learn. Thanks, Nikki. I know we were breaking up a little bit there, but I think we caught, we caught oh, sorry. the key points there. Uh, I want to transition now to, you know, a, a tougher subject, but one that's uh, of critical importance, and that's um, providing access and opportunity and uh, equity. And is there a role for co-working to play in that uh, in our community and, and elsewhere? Um, you know, there are parts of our community that uh, even getting to your co-working locations might be hard for them. Um, and um, they may not even have an idea of how to connect with entrepreneurs to get mentoring and guidance. And so, um, you know, that's so critical and we have a lot of wealth uh, inequality uh, and income inequality right now in our country. How can co-working be part of that uh, building of a community and supporting one another? Anybody who wants to jump in on that one? Megan, you're unmuted, so go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I know that that same sort of um, environment exists in Bit, at Bit and Mice Fresno as well. And so um, they've looked here at bus schedules and um, ways that they can encourage um, members who maybe have a harder time, you know, getting around, help them um, to make it here, you know, just physically to be able to make it to the space, but we still have a lot more work to do there too. And we've got some time to um, take a further deeper dive into where those needs are, the accessibility um, and, you know, the different um, uh, aspects of all of that. Yeah, uh, what, what I would say is, uh, you know, fundamentally co-working spaces um, are about community. So, um, you know, traditionally we've, we've held events that focus on bringing together different groups. You know, at our space we've had events for people who deal with technology, people who are entrepreneurs, and also people who are, who are creatives. So I think falling in that same vein, we can be a um, a hub to gather around, you know, pretty much any issue or concern. And then also it will be a good place to um, communicate to these different, you know, cross sections of our community because we have that, we have that reach. But I think in a solution to kind of, um, you know, make co-working accessible to all, one, one solution would be uh, smaller co-working spaces in geographical, you know, geographical areas. For example, um, uh, East Bakersfield. You know, I don't know if anyone's considering putting a co-working space in East Bakersfield, um, but I think one could definitely be there. Um, the little smaller outlying uh, communities in, in Bakersfield, I think that would also be um, a good thing to consider. Now, would it look like a, you know, a huge facility? No, maybe not, but maybe it can be a, uh, become a hub where we can channel, you know, resources and information and it can become a gathering place uh, for people. Thanks, Tabari. Justin, what do you have to add? Yeah, speaking of uh, small satellite communities around Bakersfield, um, for those of you who aren't up to date on your uh, Kern County geography, uh, Kernville is about an hour northeast of Bakersfield up in the mountains. And um, one thing, one of, uh, as I was kind of coming up in the, uh, with the idea of, of co-working and as, as it was, uh, we're kind of coming to this conclusion, one of the things that I noticed was that um, students in this area, in this, in this valley, um, don't have access to a lot of the same resources uh, that they might, if they're in Bakersfield. Um, they, uh, you know, any, any of uh, the great resources that are in, uh, available in Bakersfield would require them to get bus down. Um, into town and that's just um, not feasible for a lot of things um, and in addition um, there are pockets of the Kern River Valley that um, you, you have this generational poverty and so even if um, you provide access you still have students that um, have the mindset that um, you know they don't have the ability to achieve and they don't have the ability to uh, you know pursue these these high demand careers and so 
as we found in Kernville Cowork, one of our um, guiding values was that we wanted to um, inspire these students and show them that they do have the capability and they can you know, just sit down at, in front of a computer and create things just with their mind. And they do have the ability to get these, uh, you know, to break into these high demand careers. Um, and so one of the reasons Kernville Cowork was created was to be that equalizer. And to Tabari's point, um, when you have a co-working space in a smaller community, it's going to look different. Co-working has traditionally always been in the very large cities where you've got massive uh, commute issues and traffic issues and people want to, um, you know, uh, have a, a, work, a workspace that um, is, is a little bit closer to where they live. Here, um, we're going to have a different character. We, we, we're driven by different values. And so we're going to look a little bit different. Um, having co-working communities in these smaller uh, communities is going to be different than uh, what you might see in uh, you know, a larger city like Bakersfield, um, you know, to use the uh, term large city lightly. Um, so I, I, I definitely agree with, uh, with what, uh, you know, Tabari was saying, like, we do need to, um, kind of spread out our, our co-working spaces, um, and launch these co-working spaces with the intention of, um, benefiting the community. Um, and I think Bitwise is a great example for that. In fact, we've, uh, I've been talking with a lot of different people from Bitwise to find out how we can, you know, kind of share a lot of uh, what they're doing good for the community and bring it up here to uh, Kern River Valley. Thanks, Justin. Um, you know, one of the things that gives me a lot of encouragement is the spirit of collaboration here. And it's clearly evident with uh, all four of you here. I love that you're sharing ideas. Um, recently, uh, wearing one of my hats uh, as a trustee at the Panama Buena Vista Union School District, we, we've hired a new superintendent, and she comes from Fresno, uh, Megan, and uh, I think has had some connection with Bitwise, but she said something to me that really stuck, and she said, uh, when I asked her about what's different about Bakersfield and Fresno, um, not to put a negative spin on anything about Fresno, but she just said um, that Bakersfield and Kern County really strike her as a loving community, and uh, I, it's very... Uh, evident here in just the spirit of, of the four of you all being willing to work together and promote sort of the greater good. And I always want to end on a positive note. So the final question to each one of you, um, and I'll, I'll let uh, Nikki go first, is please share uh, one thought that gives you hope for the future uh, about entrepreneurship in Kern County. Well, I don't know um, who all's on the, on the call, but I would say <laughs> We're the last conservative county in California, right? We're pro-business. We're an amazing county and city to do, my city, but to do business in. We have a very forward-thinking, supportive local government in our county who want business here. They want us to be successful. They want to partner with us. They want to remove roadblocks to set solid partners who want to invest in this community up with success. I've never experienced anything like it. My husband and I relocated from San Diego. Uh, we graduated in from, in from Tehachapi, but it was unbelievable just the amount of support we got from day one when we relocated our first business. And now we're opening up our fourth, I think, business in Tehachapi and just so blessed to be a part of this county. And so I would say for me, it's been the incredible support and that gives me hope to not want to move to Texas or Florida. Thanks, Nikki. Tabari? Yeah, what, what gives me uh, hope and encouragement is the, the community. Um, people uh, that I found in Bakersfield, they're, they're open, in Kern County in general, they're open to, to help you and support you. And I would say from the entrepreneurial community, you know, uh, the times that we're living in, they, they are challenging, no doubt about that. But I'm encouraged because, you know, that's, you know, that's what we do. We solve problems and we find solutions and we don't back away from things because they're difficult, but we probably run towards them because they are difficult. And so that, that will, that's what gives me hope, um, this community and then also the, the wonderful entrepreneurs and the, the driven entrepreneurs in this community. Thanks, Tabari. Megan, how about you? I would also have to say that the community and the community's excitement surrounding Bitwise's arrival uh, is 
really exciting and has brought all of us at Bitwise a lot of hope. And, you know, Bitwise, um, if you're watching and you're new to Bitwise, we're not just going to be offering a co-working space, but one of the reasons Bitwise was, was created was to um, stimulate the underdog city via tech education and collaboration uh, and jobs. And so people, I feel like our young generation, they're hungry to create and hungry to for purpose. And living here, you may not feel like you have much of an opportunity in tech, but that's why Bitwise is here. We want to lift up the underdog cities around the country and activate the human potential that's here um, to then lift up the whole city and the whole community. So um, I feel the hunger for people. Like you said, everybody's excited um, to know, you know when we're gonna be live and we love where we are in downtown um, and we're, yeah, super hopeful, super excited for what the future is bringing even amidst this you know, covering of global pandemic. Thanks, Megan. All right, Justin, bring it home, please. <laughs> wow, everybody covered a lot of good stuff. Um, what makes me really hopeful is um, kind of seeing this new wave of, of people being able to connect and get access to resources and access to opportunities um, in, a, in, a, in a new and kind of different way. Um, I, uh, when I uh, graduated uh, from high school here in the Kern River Valley, there is a sense that if you wanted to get one of these high demand jobs, you had to move out, you had to move out of Kern County. And just like Megan said, there's new opportunities where we can say to our, our, our best and brightest, like, hey, you can, you can be wildly successful um, working in technology, working in some of these uh, high demand careers, and you don't have to leave Kern County. Um, and not only that, but we have a fantastic network of people that are, are willing to support you, represented well on this call, but also other uh, resources in the county. And I think that's a place that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see Kern County uh, developing that way. And uh, that gives me a lot of hope for the future. Thanks, Justin. I'm going to pause now and uh, again encourage all of our um, listeners online to submit any questions and I'm going to be reviewing those and then come back to our four panelists for a few minutes of Q&A. Um, while we're looking at our questions that have come in, I'm going to transition for a brief update from someone who's doing another exciting thing in our community that's going to help support future entrepreneurs. Uh, we have on the line uh, here and through Zoom, Donna Schwartz. She is the founder of the uh, Matrix Entrepreneur Academy. And Donna's got a couple of minutes here just to tell everybody a little bit about what Matrix Entrepreneur Academy is doing and um, how you can get involved if you have a potential student or wanna be uh, supportive in other ways. So Donna, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. Um, yes, about 10 years ago, I had this goal of starting an entrepreneur high school and that has evolved into, um, finally, I set Vision 2020. This would be the big year we would start, having no idea, of course, that it wasn't really going to be exactly the way we thought it would be. So, uh, but our program is uh, going to be a private school uh, for entrepreneurs. Um, that will be from seventh through 12th grade. And we've recently added a young adult class due to popular demand. There's actually been quite a number of young people who have just graduated from high school or are in those early 20s that want to learn about entrepreneurship. And as most of you probably know, many businesses close, not because they don't do well with what they do, it's they don't know how to run a business. They don't know about cash flow and marketing and all the things that you all know that must be part of having a business. So um, we're uh, using the curriculum from um, Fresno State um, entrepreneur professor, Dr. Tim Stearns. He has his own business, which is providing entrepreneur curriculum. Uh, and he has helped us, this uh, curriculum is actually approved, A to G approved. And we're working with the University of Phoenix to actually have them um, approve it for college credit. Uh, it's a program that starts with financial literacy because if people have uh, if kids don't learn about personal finances, 
then they don't have any way to know about how to run a business. And I apologize for being in a little bit of a noisy background here, but uh, so then uh, the entrepreneur curriculum will primarily be, they'll start with starting a class business, which will be where they work as a group to start a business. And all of these businesses are going to be in the form of actually making money. Um, I was a public school teacher for 29 years. I um, taught the Panama School District in Rosedale here in, and Tehachapi High School in Kern County. And I, um, you know, there was always this big thing about kids, they can't make money. And I actually taught an entrepreneur class at Freedom Middle School. And everybody was so afraid the kids were gonna make money. They had, to, if they made money, they had to donate it. And there's something really motivating to kids. Um, it's just amazing how many kids I am finding that have come out of the woodwork. They have their own little businesses that uh, we were going to have a teen biz expo. And there were like 13 kids that just signed up almost immediately because they wanted to sell whatever it was they made or did and, and or whatever. And so we'll have a perf uh, performing arts part of that too, where like they wanna use their talent and turn that into a business. There's some really very successful talented people in this town who use their voice, they teach, they uh, perform. So whatever a kid wants to do, after we do the class business, they'll each, we'll help each of them develop their own business. And one of the things that all of you might be able to help me with is we're looking for mentors, like one mentor per student that would work with a student for, a, we're saying a minimum of one hour a month, just to be a connection and bounce ideas off and, uh, so anybody that knows anybody in that form would be great. Uh, because of COVID, we also have added an entire online program. So kids can be literally all over the United States and, um, or Canada or the world for that matter, and um, take the online program that is, it's just a basic introductory program, but uh, won't have all the other parts to it, like working together with a team to develop a class business. But um, I really thank, uh, JP for giving me opportunity to just share what we're doing and um, we'll be providing those kids that will be in your co-working spaces within a few years. There you go. Uh, thank you, Donna. So uh, where can people go to, to learn more about Matrix Entrepreneur Academy? Uh, when does your school year start and, and maybe how much uh, does it cost or what's the, the lowest uh, entry point in terms of cost? Well, um, it's going to start August 17th. Um, we're right now going to be at, um, we have space at Regis, which is, has a co-working space too there, uh, but it's a, a virtual office building. Um, and uh, the website is matrixentrepreneuracademy.org. Uh, the nonprofit that is starting it is uh, Innovative Entrepreneur Education, and Tabari is one of our board members. So we're happy to see him here. Um, the cost for the full program is $3,500 for the year. We have a number of um, business people in the community that have come out of the woodwork that are willing to help support and pay tuition while they help kids be productive. Um, our goal is that each student be making uh, within a year after they start their business around $500 a year, a month rather, and that will put them part of the Rhino Club. I don't know how many of you realize that rhinos are connected to entrepreneurs, but that's um, kind of our little mascot there. And um, so any student that's really interested in coming, uh, we want to help them and make that work for them. And financially, that is that way too. So it's not like they have to be uh, absolutely, totally have wealthy parents that's gonna pay their way. Um, we have scholarships and uh, business people that are willing to help. Well, thank you, Donna, for uh, sharing about Mon Matrix, Ent Matrix Entrepreneur Academy today, and we're excited to see what you guys are going to be doing. Uh, again, it's matrixentrepreneuracademy.org. Uh, one of many things that is organically starting to happen in our community, and that's uh, really what Kite is all about. We're just a way to convene people who are passionate about entrepreneurship, uh, we don't want to operate our own programs. We just want to help connect people and uh, be a convening forum. So um, I'm going to come back to our panel now. And we do have a couple of, a uh, few good questions that have come in. One of the questions was, um, and I think it was tying into uh, our conversation about engaging with companies to provide remote work opportunities for their employees. Are any of our panelists 
uh, familiar or aware of companies that are already doing that with your organizations here in Kern County? Or is there a, a website anywhere where companies that offer this in Kern County um, are listed? And, and if not, is that something that could be put together? Uh, that's an open question to the group. Uh, I'll say okay. we are working on it. You know, a, a company locally who has an office with us, I don't think they want to be named, but there is, um, so on, on the internet, there are websites that kind of put together um, uh, companies that are remote friendly, but I do not know of any directory that exists uh, specifically for um, Kern County businesses. Now, what I, I would imagine that if there was a directory that it would be much larger now just because of the nature um, of work in Kern County, but I think it would be it would be helpful for us because we could, uh, you know, we could market to that list. But I don't know of one that exists. Okay, thanks, Tabari, and uh, hopefully we'll see that developed by someone in the future. Another question that came in is, uh, how many workspace locations or co-work uh, locations are there currently in Kern County, and is there a member directory for each location? Um, I know, of course, we have the four of you and your organizations represented here today. Uh, Donna rep, uh, rec referenced Regis, which is a little bit more of a, a office suite type of setup in Bakersfield. And then um, there's uh, another organization on uh, California and Stockdale. I'm, I can't remember the name offhand. Someone can help me with that. But are there any others that we're missing that um, we want to bring into these conversations in the future? Upstart Village. Thank you. Yeah, Upstart no, no Village. Project. Yeah, Phil Rudnick is a person there. And Regis does, uh, they did mention that they do have one big room that they're using for co-working. And what about the space that's in the Bank of America building across from uh, the Bakersfield City building? Pacific it's, Workspaces. Thank you. Okay, I see I didn't know about that one. It's, it's a really well done space, but it doesn't, it lacks the esprit that Tabari's mesh has, you know, it, it, it's a little more sterile. I've visited both places and so, but it, it's very well done. All right. Justin, any more of them hiding out up there in the mountains that you know of? Um, I, not that I'm aware of. I, I believe uh, Nikki's is gonna be the second one in Eastern Kern County. Um, but uh, no, I, I, think that's, I think that's all we've got east of Bakersfield as far as I'm aware. Yeah, certainly would be good to, to get them in all of our communities uh, in Kern County. That's a, a personal dream that I have that maybe Kite can help play a role in. Next question that we have, and it, uh, I'll ask Megan to jump in on this one first. How can um, all of you, uh, and I by extension probably the greater uh, Kite community, work together to avoid nurturing a culture of working in silos? Well, I, th I think, co-working automatically um, facilitates the the community aspect and the and um, not working in in a silo i don't i don't really know how to answer that question somebody else can jump in <laughs> i think if i read the question and if, i'm not sure if i'm reading it right but i read he said how can all of you so that we aren't all working in, in silos so i don't know if if the question was the co-working facilities work well together. Uh, if that's the case, I think Richard has the Kerr, East Kern Economic, Economic Alliance, excuse me. It's a group of uh, business associates and different government representatives and they meet monthly or quarterly, but they go to a different venue every month, every meeting. We've hosted them at the Worldwind Building. And so I don't know if Kite is gonna be meeting more frequently. I, and if we'll ever get off of these Zoom calls and be able to actually physically meet, I think it would be awesome to do field trips and meet at a different facility every time. Going to Mesh and meeting with Tavari was a game changer for me. He was so generous and so transparent. Buddy flew up and met with Justin and just loved him and his commitment and his heart for his community. And so I think it would be amazing to help bridge any gaps that I don't think we have, but could avoid ever having by meeting and sharing and learning what each other's doing. I think it would be incredible. 
Well, that's absolutely what we're hoping to do with Kite and, and encourage others to help us do. It's, it's not about promoting one organization over the other. Um, I'm going to come back to you, Megan, because one of our questions is um, from Troy. It says, if you join the Bakersfield Bitwise location, do you also get access to the Fresno locations? That is something that we're working on. We don't have that kind of a membership set up yet, um, but for our, we hope to have a membership that will allow access um, to all of our co-working spaces, Oakland, Merced, Fresno, and Bakersfield. Okay, very good. We'll stay tuned for that. Um, I do want to call out, we forgot one organization um, and just inadvertently, Diana, thanks for reminding me about Idea Hive, uh, another kind of co-work um, workspace that's available here in town. I know they've done some great work and some, and some events, so I want to give a shout out to Idea Hive. And then um, last, I think we've got time, Richard, maybe I'll take one or two questions here uh, and then we'll give it back to you. Um, do, question from Frank, do these workspace locations have rooms to accommodate online conferencing and social media or tech interaction? So maybe I'm, I'm thinking, Frank might be thinking of um, startups that need to do broadcasting or other Zoom meetings with clients and things like that. Do your facilities offer those types of equipment and, uh, and connectivity? Well, at, uh, at MESH, we have, I believe, four or five conference rooms. Um, so we have ones that fit two persons, three persons, you know, up to 50 people. But uh, we don't have a Zoom room, but we're, mm -hmm. we're working on getting it together. Go ahead, Megan. So the, oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, yes, Bitwise has... Uh, conference rooms as well, um, podcast booths, and um, phone booths for private calls. Um, yeah. And Nikki? The, the Village Collective will have similar, we'll have uh, different sizes of conference rooms with a Zoom. One will be a full Zoom room. We also have a meeting space that can accommodate up to 75 possibly 150, we're not 100% sure yet, for classroom instruction and training. And then uh, we will have sound booths as well, phone booths for private calls, but also uh, podcast studios. Thanks, Nikki. Justin, anything about your facility up there you'd like to share? Yeah, so um, we've got a, a training room where we've done a lot of classes training, um, doing uh, coding for kids and stuff like that. Um, however, uh, due to the pandemic and, and since we can't have uh, large gatherings for a while, we've uh, converted into a co-working space, but we are working on building some, building out some additional spaces that can be used for that. Um, so uh, no dedicated space, but uh, it's actually, you know, a lot of people do uh, video calls all day long here at the co-work. All right, and uh, last question. He actually submitted three because he's a professor and uh, many of you know Professor Jeremy Woods. So I'm only gonna pick one of them before I hand it back to Richard. Um, I wanna respect our time. But in, in essence, uh, Jeremy's asked, what are we doing to work with our local governments uh, to market Kern County, either through regulatory incentives um, or other things we can be doing to um, promote co-working in Kern County as a place for entrepreneurs. Anything that we haven't covered today um, that our panelists would like to um, share or ideas you might have on how we can do a better job of that? I guess I would just echo the sentiment maybe of Jeremy's question that now's the time, right? I don't, I'm not a a person who moved, we always laugh that people move to Tehachapi and they want the door closed behind them as soon as they get in from LA. They don't want anybody else to come, right? And I don't feel that way. I grew up there. I think Tehachapi is so much more vibrant and amazing with the uh, multiple people and from different communities that we have. So I just think now's the time to capitalize, right? As Justin was talking, now's the time we've had friends from Laguna Beach, lawyers, people with, you know, high household income say, 
I've been looking at real estate in Tatchaby. I can't believe the prices. I can't believe you, what you can get for your money, the size of the lot, all of the things. So now's the time that Kern County, if I were at uh, the Association of Realtors in Tatchaby, I'd be running ads in Sunset Magazine, LA Times, whatever I could to promote our community and our county because now is the time to capitalize. So I don't know. I think we have a we have a tourism commission, different things. We attend different expos and whatnot. But uh, but I think, you know, now is the time to capitalize on that opportunity more than ever. And uh, I I think um, it's it's such an easy story to tell, um, you know, about you know kind of uh, exactly what what Nikki just said. Um, you know, it's it, it it doesn't take much arm twisting to convince somebody that this is just a fantastic place to be. Uh, for quality of life and, and to make your, your dollar go a long ways. Um, I think we just need to tell it is, is the first step. Um, and then the, uh, the um, I think there's some creative things that other communities are doing that we can look at. Um, Richard Chapman uh, turned me on to uh, something, a uh, program that Tulsa has called Tulsa Remote. Um, they're doing some really creative stuff with uh, providing incentives for individual workers uh, to move to Tulsa and take advantage of their uh, remote friendly atmosphere. Um, I, I think uh, we don't necessarily need to copy and paste what other people are doing, but I think uh, looking at some, what some of these other communities are doing and seeing how we can uh, take the best parts of that, I think is uh, you know, just a lot of creativity we can, we can have there. Well, on, on that note, um, I know there are people listening online who might be able to help uh, do some of these things through local government and other means. So um, that's why we're doing this, so we can share ideas and uh, move forward. So I want to thank all of our panelists. Uh, we really appreciate what you're doing for entrepreneurs in our community and for being a part of KITE. And I'm going to take it, turn it back to Richard to uh, close us out for today. Great. Well, thanks, JP. And wow, what an august group of uh, experts talking uh, about and the potential as well as um, the existing economic vitality in Kern County. And we had folks from throughout the county, which is real, really where we want to show that we have these centers of excellence um, in Bakersfield, but also a place like Tehachapi and uh, Kern River Valley and more places to come. You know, I was looking at a definition for entrepreneurship, and I think everyone has a different definition. Um, but I found a one that I really think it pertains to uh, the discussion. And according to Howard Stevenson, a professor of Harvard Business School, entrepreneurship is the pursuit of opportunity beyond resources controlled, beyond resources controlled. So despite what you have now, uh, if you have this vision and drive, resources will come. And so I think you all, the four of you, as well as our uh, moderator, have, have been extremely successful. Uh, in defining what entrepreneurship is. So a couple of housekeeping um, items. We do need mentors, as JP said, uh, along the four pillars, funding, spaces, guidance, and talent. And as we build Kite, um, I think that is definitely, um, it, it, we cannot be successful if we don't have the entrepreneurs at the table. We also are working on developing uh, sponsorships for um, to send uh, a couple of um, uh, future entrepreneurs to conferences for professional development uh, through that's through the auspices of kite we will have in addition to panel discussions like today a uh, regular podcast and so you'll be hearing more about that everybody please sign up on gokite.org if you're not already on the list our next meeting is scheduled for uh, september 29th in ridgecrest uh, stay tuned uh, today we were supposed to be in shafter um, but on september the 29th um, we may be virtual, we may be in person. And I wanted to thank all the attendees, the speakers, JP, our executive uh, producer, Courtney on Salvahar, and uh, KTET for uh, streaming this event live. And we hope to uh, see you, um, if not in person, virtually in the near future. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Richard. All right. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.